Now you are also going to get uh, books made for the two of us. Yeah, I have those books. If um, I ha if you stop by either today or tomorrow, they're right, they're um, they're they're here. Okay. Uh, now Mark had gotten hold of me to find out if I could be there around two. Do you still want to do that? Um, you you don't need to be. I mean, I'll leave the books here for you can have them tomorrow or today. It doesn't matter. All, all I'll do is I'll leave them on the conference table for you whenever you want to pick them up. Okay. Now is that uh, in the room we were in yesterday, uh, Tuesday, or down by uh, your? Do you remember the small conference table is where you know the room you learned on uh, PMP. Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah, right there. If that's okay. 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 That sounds fine. Okay. So um, well, let me just start. Well, you know, like this is just kind of a test, you know. But we'll we'll get it better and better every time. Okay. Sure. Um, I'm I'm very very excited. You got it working. By that is awesome. All right. So I'm going to first start with what is um, six sigma, and okay. basically we have phases that we have to um, utilize. And the first phase is going to be the defined phase. And as we go through, I'll sh I'll show you more. But um, you can see the first slide. It's just the title. Mm -hmm. Okay, and let me see here. <clears throat> now, is it okay? Okay, and just give me one moment. Sure, I just got to turn on the projector so I can see it. That's cheating. <laughs> okay. It's coming on. It's just be on in a moment. Okay, here we go. So we're going to first, welcome to Six Sigma Black Belt. The first thing we're going to do is go through the defined phase. We're going to be utilizing different types of software in this program. One is going to be Visio. One is going to be Sigma XL, XL, which I'll have you download a sample of. And we may do some stuff in SharePoint so we can get an idea of the tools that you could use um, with Six Sigma. Now the first thing I want us to just point out is that we have um, uh, basically how this chapter is, or module is going to lay out. We have definitions, the history, the strategy, problem solving, roles and responsibility, Six Sigma fundamentals, selecting projects, elements of waste, and wrap up items, or how we'll do each section. Now, first thing we have to understand is that Sigma it's a Greek letter assigned to represent the amount of variation and consistency in a measurable outcome. What that means is that when we use Six Sigma, we want to look for um, changes that happen. Because if you have too much change or too much um, variation in a process, you have the opportunity for things to go wrong. So if you make something that's repeatable over and over, it's very easy to you know figure out numbers such as uh, how many pieces per hour can I make? How many defects will I get from this process? How many good parts will I get from the process? So we're trying to minimize variation of our processes. It doesn't mean that we're, have, we're minimizing the variation of our product. We're trying to minimize the variation of the process to make that product or maybe uh, anything else. So we have a Six Sigma system. And the Six Sigma system is a strategy that our company is going to implement so um, we can get everybody thinking that way. Six Sigma um, will not work if we don't get everyone to have a buy-in. We need to get people to buy in to say that we want to become more efficient. We want to have our processes measurable. We want to document the way we do everything. And we don't want that to change. Now, if you've probably heard of something like ISO 9000, after we've yeah. done this, yeah. You have heard of it? Okay, great. 
Um, and what Six Sigma does is help us develop the processes, and then ISO is the documentation of those processes that we will show the world that we're doing the same thing every way each time. Now, a variable is a naming for a group of items that are used, such as an equation or situation. Now, if you look at any product that's manufactured, it may have a variable. It could say, you know, um, uh, if the color is a little bit different, if, the, if the, it's not falling within tolerance. These are all things that are, um, you know, we want to track. But a variable is also how do we have, um, like if I want to start my car tomorrow, for example, my car didn't start. What are the variables that would lead to my car not starting? And that could be A, my battery is um, you know, low on power. My battery is cold. I have a bad starter. Um, all those could be variables. I'm out of gas. But what would not be a variable is probably what I wore that day. But when we're doing stuff in Six Sigma, we throw all the variables up on a whiteboard, and we start to figure out which ones are important and which ones are not. Make sense? Yep. Yep. Okay. So the next thing is a problem. When something does not work as well as expected, the goal of Six Sigma is to always identify opportunities. What opportunity can we do to make something better? We can create a project around it, a Six Sigma project. And based on that, we can hopefully um, you know, have, have better production, better customer service, uh, better um, hiring practices. Um, so everything can probably be done better in a company, but we want to identify the stuff that's easy for us to look at first and see if we can come up with solutions. Now data, data is what we will gather. Six Sigma is not based on just opinion. Every time we want to try to create a Six Sigma project, what we have to do is um, back, back it up with facts. And when we're done with the project, we have to back it up with facts. We, you know, um, we can say, well, we're, we, if we're going to say we produce so many parts per hour, we need to prove that. And then at the end of the project, we need to show that the changes we made hopefully met those goals. They may not, but that we're going to try to. Okay. Methodology, tools, and tactics. Six Sigma. Business strategy. Part of Six Sigma. Because by using Six Sigma, we're going to be able to have a better product. We're going to be able to have, um, hopefully, um, a better support for our customers and hopefully make more profit. Process measurement and management. In Six Sigma, we have to be able to measure things, and we want to keep start a history of everything that we're going to do. Philosophy of operational excellence. Um, our goal is to make our quality better. By making our quality better, we have less returns, we have happier customers, we have less waste. Okay. Now, as you can see, can you see the, uh, the DMAC up on, uh, you can see the DMAC, correct? Yes, I can. Okay, excellent. And Six Sigma is based on going through DMAC. And DMAC, as we can see, is defined, is measured, is analyzed, is improved, and is controlled. And this is used to, this is made so we can look at um, existing processes. Now, one of the things that Six Sigma does also, whenever we try to create new processes or we try to uh, have new ideas, we may we can use something called DFSS, which I'm going to repeat many times in the future. But that means design for Six Sigma, because we can eliminate a lot of problems in the future if we look at it from a Six Sigma point of view and we design for Six Sigma. Versus a lot of times in the old days, they didn't do that. They just kind of came up with a process. Okay. okay. Now, Six Sigma is a business strategy. That is key. That means that we're doing a business is set up for what? A business is set up to make a profit, to make money, to get its, its goals across. Even if you're not a profit, you still have to make money to stay in business. So it is part of the strategy. What you're going to hear later is something called voice of business. What does our voice of business want to do to make sure that we can ensure the success of our company in the future? And one of the things is by lowering our variations, we can it becomes more dependable. And that's the key to Six Sigma. 
The less variations we have, the more dependable our product is, the more dependable our data is for um, predictability um, of anything we need done. Now, if you can see in Six Sigma, they have a little, they have um, this bell curve here, mm -hmm. and and if you can see, they have right in between here. That's kind of our sweet spot. And this line right here, this right in the area, there you're going to hear that term medium, uh, median. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, sometimes we're going to use the word median, uh, average. That you know we want to try to find out what the middle ground is. Right. Okay. And we're going to see a lot more about that later. So six sigma. It's a philosophy based on theory that reducing variation in a process output to stay within limits defined by the customer. Everything we do in life, everything that we produce or every process we have has variation. Statistics tell us that we can create a variation for everything. If we're measuring something, uh, in, we can measure something in tens, we can measure something in hundreds. It means that we can, if we have call times, we can say, okay, this call took three minutes. Well, we have two calls that took three minutes. Well, the calls, um, well, call A took three minutes and one second. Call B took three minutes and two seconds. So we can keep showing that there is a variation, but because we know that, we have to set up what's acceptable to a customer. And customer support, we may say, first call resolution should be five minutes. Uh, but we can't just say five minutes. We have to, in Six Sigma, say it could be four minutes to six minutes. Five minutes would be where we want to be, but we have to have an upper and a uh, lower limit set. Any questions? Nope, so far so good. Okay. Now, defects are expensive. Now, in the old days, we didn't, you know, a lot of times defects weren't tracked as well as they are nowadays. Well, Whenever we see a defect, we have to think, how much of that defect costs us? Because it's not just scrap material that we're wasted, what, or raw material. It's all the labor that goes into that, all the labor that has to go into replacing that part. If we have a defect that goes out to a customer, it's a phone call for the customer to return that. We've wasted their time. We've wasted our time. We have to send them a new part. And you know, um, how does that look to the customer that we sent them a bad part? So defects overall have a huge impact on our company, so we have to keep them as low as possible. But that does come at a cost. If we put too much, you know, uh, um, if we say we're going to have zero defects, that's unreasonable, and the cost to maintain that would be too much. So there is a big, big balance when we're working with Six Sigma. Okay. And we just have some terminology that will help us understand this a little bit better. We have defects. Uh, a defect is anything that can be on a part that doesn't meet our standard. Now, defects per unit, uh, s something as simple as a marker or a can is going to have defects. Um, you know, a, a can of soda could have the color, the tab's wrong, the soda isn't filled up, the ingredients in the soda's wrong, the, uh, the can has a dent in it. Many, many things could be a defect. On a computer, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of things that could be considered defect on that unit. Uh, parts per million. Now, in large manufacturing, we're often looking at you know huge blocks of millions. Defects per million opportunities. Now, this is can be utilized a couple of different ways, but Six Sigma is based on trying to reach only 3.4 um, defects per million. Uh, opportunities, which is very, very low. Most companies will never reach that. Most companies will float around a three Six Sigma. The Six Sigma is the goal that they want to reach. Like the medical field, medicine, they want to be a Six Sigma because obviously if they have defective medicine, people will, you know, could potentially die. But somebody who's mm -hmm. manufacturing other products may never hit that. Okay. Now we haven't heard the term roll through put yield yet or first time yield. But I'm going to explain it real briefly. What roll-through yield is versus first time, we're going to see a lot more of it later, is roll-through yield is keeping track of all of the defects as it's going to be assembled. Where first time yield only keeps track of the defects at the end of the process. So if you use first time yield at your company, at the very end of the process, you're only counting the defects there. Um, 
What it does not take into account is the defects that have been reworked, and that's the key. Roll to rule keeps track of defects and the rework. First time yield does not. We're going to see why that's so valuable the, um, later on. And the sigma values is what mm -hmm. point did we hit? So are we one, four, five? And this will be easier. This is just an introduction. But you can see that parts per million opportunities is what this is. Mm -hmm. And COPQ is um, uh, uh, cost of poor quality. Cost of poor quality just means that by manufacturing bad parts, you know, we're going to have problems. But as you can see, Robert, 99.9% .9 is pretty good yield. Now, if we're down to a sigma 1, that, this means that half of our products are going out poorly. And so we probably won't stay in business very long if we have that bad of a sigma. Okay. And it simply says on the bottom, what does 20 to 40% of our revenue represent in the organization? And almost every organization, that's the difference between staying in business and going out of business. And as we go through, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these, but we're going to see different charts, like control charts, fishbone charts, data analysis, SPC, uh, and histogram, which we're going to see all examples of this in the software we're using. But the, at this point, we just want to know there's many tools available. And in Six Sigma, if you go to get a job, some companies will use some of the tools, some companies may use other tools, but you're never going to find some company that uses all of the tools. They'll pick and choose depending on what they need. Just like a construction worker may have hundreds of tools, but he's not going to use every tool on every job. Hey, I lost the audio. Okay. Um, did you get the audio back? Did you mute it? It is back? Okay, great. Okay. No, it yeah. No, nope, it just looks like. Oh, can you hear me now? Your audio is what I meant. Tell me when you can hear me. Yes, I can. Excellent. Excellent. Yes, I can. I can hear you just okay. fine. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, so the next thing is what is a sigma as a project? Now, I want you to understand the difficult part about uh, Six Sigma is there's many portions of it. There's lean which means that we're trying to figure out how to reduce waste, which waste can be in the form of um, uh, lost time, raw material. Uh, we also have a project management um, uh, theory uh, with Six Sigma. Now, a lot of people might substitute the PMP theories at this, at this point if they were generating a project. And we also have something called TQM that it was one of the, you know, kind of the forefathers of Six Sigma, which is based on quality. So. Mm -hmm. When we have a project, we have uh, what is the problem, uh, systematic or chronic? Now, the difficulty of a, a, a pro creating a project for Six Sigma, if it's something that just happened once, we, we may not create a project around that. But if it's something we think we can create a long-term solution to, we're going to look at those. And how we pick projects, there's many, many different ways. But generally, um, somebody called it, which we're going to see later, is called a champion. Some, a champion is usually somebody who has an idea. He or she wants to you know, get something changed for the better. And they're going to try to bring it to who, who's ever needed to get this project off the ground. Usually somebody like a CFO, CEO, vice president level. And our black belts, we're going to see later, are going to be the people who are going to help implement to get it done. But they're going to use a champion to take um, uh, things out of their way. Like if somebody isn't ordering a table on time they need the champion's going to try to get that done for them. And I'm sure you've heard the expression champion within uh, like project management professional um, uh, theories. Right. Okay. So six and a well-defined effort states that the problem and output expectations are quantifiable terms. We, we just can't come out and say in Six Sigma, hey, everything looks, you know, hey, I think it worked. We have to prove it worked whenever. And we have to be able to prove that the project worked. So. Like uh, um, if, if so we say, well, we're going to improve customer satisfaction. Well, how are we going to go back and prove that we uh, improve customer satisfaction? It could be through surveys, what have you, but we do have to have a way to prove it. A data-oriented uh, problem that is addressed with facts and data, so statistics. So Six Sigma is very, very heavy in statistics. Ten years ago, when people wore black belts, 
they didn't really have very good software out, so you really had to have a uh, probably like a six month statistics class before you even did Six Sigma. But now the software will do almost everything you need. There's very, very few people that have to learn the st statistics at that level. Statistical solution, data driven, confidence, risk. And before you start any project, any change of a process, you have to be able to determine what the risk is. And this is where we take in a lot of the financial people. Because they're gonna, they're really gonna grill us in everything. Everything that we think, they're gonna say, well, yep, yeah, thank you for that. That's part of the risk. But so isn't this? So isn't this? So isn't this? And we, we need to have a really general picture of how much money we're gonna spend. Six Sigma is not uh, great for small companies because the average Six Sigma project is gonna cost at least two hundred thousand dollars. But getting people to think like Six Sigma isn't a bad thing, <coughs> even if you are small. Okay, control plan, develop method to assure long-term sustainability of the solution. We are not here for short-term solutions. We need to be able to control it. How do we check the progress? Now, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll document the process, make sure people are following it. They could have checklists. We could um, uh, make sure that um, our measuring equipment is correct. We will use samples all the time to make sure everything's being done right. And we will constantly train people and retrain them to make sure that they're doing it right. And we'll keep checking that they haven't made any changes. Make sure no one's taking shortcuts. Practical solutions are not complex, expensive, or irrational, ready to implement. Now, overall, the processes or whatever the project is may be pretty intricate, maybe extremely intricate. But the, the different portions of it need to be um, simple, need to be simple to implement. If we make the, each uh, level difficult, it's going to be very hard for us to keep Six Sigma in the company because people are going to say it's too hard to work with. So you may have a very, very complex thing, um, but you need to keep it simple for the people that you're you know, giving uh, assignments to. Okay, Tangible results have measurable, quantifiable, financial, strategic value. You're never going to get somebody to sign off on a project if you can't prove financially it will benefit the company or strategically it may improve uh, the standing with your customers. So uh, customers may be willing to pay for more if they feel that they're getting more perceived value. What's the strategy? Or maybe we can you know, uh, have the competition get less of our market share if by making some change to one of our processes. For example, if you buy a computer and you know that they pick up, uh, the customer service picks up within, you know, let's say two minutes versus somebody else that picks up within 10 minutes. That's your strategic value. You didn't necessarily add value where you're making more money off of each product, but the customer is more happy, which will hopefully uh, create repeat business. Okay. Now, in Six Sigma, one of the things we want to do is we want to prove the concept, right? Um, we have to prove that it works. What's the easiest way to prove something to somebody? Start with something that's simple. And they call this ground fruits. Simplify and standardize. Get successes as you go. Then go to you can go start with low-hanging fruit, basic tool problems, so bulk of fruit, process, characterization, automation, sweet fruit design for Six Sigma. Remember I mentioned that earlier? This D, uh, DFSS. Once we start really working with Six Sigma, we get people bought in. We want to, it's a proven fact. We need to start saying, before we make any new things, let's remember how Six Sigma works. Okay, so how do we get to this thing called Six Sigma? Well, originally, this gentleman named Bob Galvin, he started the basis of the theory of Six Sigma. He didn't really know what he had on his hands at the time, but he just developed 10 levels of improvement, 100 uh, levels of improvement, and then Six Sigma capabilities by 1992. But it was really this guy here, Bill Smith, is the person credited for the father of Six Sigma. He kind of put it together for us. And then as we went, we started seeing companies like ABB, Texas Instruments, um, started using it, um, Allied Signal. Um, used it. Now GE, this is very important here, I would say one of the people that actually got it out in the mainstay that promoted it from behind the curtain, so most people knew what it was, 
was Jack Welch. You probably remember he wrote a book on uh, his time at GE, and one of the things he credits all throughout the book is utilizing Six Sigma. So Six Sigma, um, he showed why GE was so profitable, how many changes it made, and so now Six Sigma is everywhere. They use it in restaurant industry. They use it in manufacturing. They use it in anything that you need to make a process better. <clears throat> now, Six Sigma create a realistic quantifiable goal in terms of a target of 3.4 defects per million, so we'll keep talking about that, it was a problem-solving strategy made up of four steps. Measure, analyze, improve, and control. However, right here, define was introduced by General Electric. Because you got to define the problem, right? you got to sit down and say, well, what is the problem? <coughs> now, some of the things that we have is the roadmap. Now, a really important thing to point out here is that we may start with define, go through measure, and come back around. Just like in, when people learn PMP. You know, you, you might me you measure something, but you might go back and say, okay, that idea we had didn't exactly work. You might even go back and change your project chart or your project scope, which we're going to learn about a little bit later, but it's always a good idea to know that sometimes you will be bouncing back and forth. Identify the problem area. Determine appropriate project focus. Estimate the cost of poor quality. How is this poor quality affecting us, our customers? We create the pro charter project. The charter project is going to basically highlight well, who's on this project, what do we want to accomplish from this project. Access stability, ca capability, and measurement systems. All throughout this project, we are going to be taking measurements to see if what we're doing is working. But we have to decide what we're going to measure, how often we're going to measure, who's going to measure, what tools we're going to measure with, how often we're going to calibrate those tools. So there's a lot that goes behind it. Identify and prioritize all the X's. The X's are our variables. What's, what, what are some of the things we have to look out for? Shift changes. Uh, people that are doing it, what equipment they're going to be using versus somebody else, the speed of something, the, uh, um, the raw material, um, all those could be X's. Prove, disprove, axis on impact. You know, just because we think it's part of an X, we have to say, we have to prove it. We can't just guess. Uh, so identify, prioritize, select solution, control X's causing problems. Implement solutions to control to eliminate causing problems, eliminate control plan, ensure a problem does not return, and then verify the financial impact. So it's just like anything in life. We identify the problem, we got to make sure the problem stays, you know, goes away. Why did it get there in the first place? Maybe it was just because it was part of the original design, but we don't want it coming back. Okay. <clears throat> now define phase deployments. So we actually, after we've decided on how we want this to work, um, okay, now you can see that we have um, the business case. Now the business case is is kind of like think about if you went to a uh, you were a lawyer and you you had to go to court. You have a case. <coughs> you have to prove your case. You have to you have witnesses. You have to have uh, people that um, uh, you know agree with your case. So it's the same thing in business. We have a business case. We have to prove to the people that we work with why this is a good idea. Now we're going to notify belts and stakeholders of you know um, who's involved uh, with this case and the progress. We're going to create a high level process map. What a high level process map? is a map that shows how a company runs. Now, depending on the size of the company, it usually means something that we go from uh, an order being placed to the cash received. So that's all the process in between. But if, it's a, if you're just trying to take care of a department that has lots of changes, that could also be a high-level map. Define, um, determine appropriate project focus, Pareto and project desirability. Pareto we haven't approached yet. A Pareto chart is the ability to um, keep track of things. So, uh, for example, your defects, um, and um, if, especially like an assembly line now, what they'll do instead of sampling, 
Every time a defect comes through, they're going to mark it on a Pareto chart. It's all electronic now. They just press a button that says defect and what the defects were. Well, we want that um, knowledge. Define and project charter. Okay. Problem statement, objective, <coughs> primary metric, and secondary metric. What is the things that we're measuring? What is the metric that we're using? And what are the secondary things that we are going to measure? So um, it was in the case of phone calls. We're trying to have people for call times. We're going to measure first time call would be the first metric. Um, you know, it has to be maybe it's at three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. That's our first metric. The second metric might be did the people have to call back because it wasn't solved on the first time or did they get transferred? So those could be other metrics. Estimate COPQ once again. Um, did we approve or disprove this focus? So if we approved it or disproved it, um, we may have to go back to the beginning saying, okay, these measurements that we thought, um, these changes that we, we did a little sample on, it doesn't look like we're right. We have to create the team. Now that team is going to be made up of people in the department, maybe consultants. Um, uh, it's going to be made up of uh, black belts, green belts, yellow belts, and our champion, which we're going to see a little bit later. We charter the team. Charter the team is starting to get who is responsible for what. And we're going to start to get ready to measure some of the things that we're going to suggest. Now, deliverables <clears throat> is charter benefits analysis, team members, team meetings, process map high level. What's the thing we are measuring? What's the next thing we're going to measure? And lean opportunities. Now, lean opportunities is simple. Simply, how can we save waste? And that can come in the form of time, raw material, money, anything that we think we can be more efficient. Stakeholder analysis. What do we think our stakeholders are going to want from a result of this project? Project plan. How are we going to um, put the project together? Now, um, some of the software that we learn as part of Six Sigma is MS Project because MS Project is going to help us develop at least the WBS, which stands for what? What does the WBS stand for? Work Breakdown Schedule. Right. Work Breakdown Schedule. Thank you. And we have issues and barriers. Every project we have to identify what those issues and barriers are. So a lot of those issues can be money, right? That's going to be the first thing. Do we, have the, do we have the workforce to actually pull it off? A lot of times companies have great ideas, but if they don't have the labor to be able to do it or labor available or the talent to do it, the project's probably going to end in disaster. Okay, Six Sigma places the emphasis on the process. Uses structured data-driven approach centered on customer Six Sigma, can resolve business problems where they are rooted, for example. Uh, Month-end reports, capital expenditure approvals, new hire recruiting. <coughs> so we have to keep all this in mind. Um, you know, if we need to get somebody that we have to hire to help us with this process, how quick will we get that person? You know, if we say two weeks, it might be unrealistic. It might be four weeks. It might be four months, depending on um, their skill set. Six of it is a breakthrough strategy. Why the scope of definition of quality? Includes the value of uh, utilizing product services. So why do they say it's because it's looking at the big picture. It's not just looking at you know the one process. It's how does it affect our whole company? Okay. So some of the things we have is conventional definitions of quality, focus, and conformance to standards. And what that means we have um, our, our requirement for lower and our upper limits. And we want to have a strategy or product service that meets certain specifications. For good or good quality and performance standards. Now, one of the things that we do want to keep track of is rework. In the past, rework wasn't kept track of. It was just considered part of doing business, cost of doing business. But with Six Sigma, they want us to use roll through plot yield so we're keeping track of that because see how much that product actually costs us. Efforts were overlooked, unquantified time, money, and equipment. And many, many small companies that we have will see that. All they care about is getting the product done 
get it done as fast as they can, and everything else is secondary. They don't keep track of the defects and how much it costs them. Basically, how they would do a quote is to say, okay, you want 5,000 pieces produced in a smaller company like uh, injection molding. We're going to produce those 5,000 at this cost. And they kind of estimate, you know, that it's more of a, a guesstimate than it is a real estimate instead of taking all of their expenses into place. At the end of the day, they hope they made a profit by, you know, putting like a 50% margin on everything they do or putting a 60%. Well, the truth is they might have been able to get away with a 30% margin if they knew all their costs. Or maybe the person needed a lot of setup time. Maybe they should have had a 70% markup. But it's hard to put those in factors if you're not keeping track of everything. Okay. Understand the relationship between independent variables and dependent. Uh, as vital few independent variables affect the dependent variables, and optimizing the independent variables to control are dependent. So simply... Um, and, and every same process that we do, um, variables are affected by each, uh, each other. Um, some variables can be completely independent, um, but many do depend on other ones. Other ones may work perfect if the variable before them worked perfect. So, for example, with me starting my car, um, we know if I have a very good battery in my car, um, you know, that's one variable that may be independent. But if I'm looking at more like my, if it could be something else, like my starter. Well, my starter might be great, but is my solenoid bad? You know, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of stuff that can affect the variables. I'm not an auto mechanic, but just to give you an idea. Monitor the optimized independent variables. Well, in Six Sigma, we're always looking to see what little pieces we can improve on. And in a process, there might be 20 variables that have to change, that can change, but there might be three other ones that can change. What can we do to optimize those? Okay. Let's basically use common sense. So in this example, we have uh, a crusher yield. How, and the feed, speed, material type, tool wear, and lubricant. These are all things that can affect our, our um, process for, uh, for a crusher. We have to look at each one of these. Which one of these can we change? Can we make it uh, the feed process better? Can we speed it up? Maybe the speed is too fast and that's why we're not getting the results we want. Are we not, do we not have a good maintenance program? So the tool wear is having more effect than we want. In the old days, there was not a lot of good maintenance program. Basically, if it fixes, they sent somebody out to fix it. Now what we try to do is See, how can we fix it before it breaks? And that would be a good maintenance program. Time to close. So for accounting, how long does it take to close our books each quarter? Trial balance, corrective accounts, sub-accounts, memos, and it can be used for anything. What are the variables? Okay, so we're always inspecting the X's uh, testing time. So we're always, always looking at it. So if you want to take a minute break, what you can do, uh, or you can do it later, it's not a big deal, but to make a good cup of espresso. What are some of the things that you would say that would help make us a good espresso? Uh, what are some of the things you would think would make a good espresso or would affect uh, the making of it? I would say uh, water, quality of the water. Water is a great one. Mm -hmm. And uh, the type of coffee, whether it's good coffee or bad. Good, and good coffee. Yep. How hot it's brewed. Uh, how hot it's brewed. Uh, the skill of the operator. Excellent. Skill of the operator. And I'll just throw like one last one is how often the, the pot's been cleaned or, you know, any of that stuff. With your, but everyone, it's, if you really look at it, it's not that difficult. We're always looking at the factors, the X's that would affect our eventual outcome. Thank you. So in this, in this case, <clears throat> they show that we have a lot of factors, but we have to filter it down to which ones are important for Six Sigma. So we'll filter down, it's, or, you know, uh, I, I prefer to, uh, to think of that as a filter more than a funnel. And we just have to find the ones that are going to be most important for us to concentrate on. And they have a little joke here. Arguably, it said, give me a liver big enough and fulcrum on which to place that I shall move the world. 
So that's essentially saying to us that yes. we can make change <coughs> by utilizing the DMAC problem solving methodology to identify and optimize the vital few variables will realize sustainable breakthrough performance as opposed to incremental. We want to try to use a DMAC so we can get to um, every our process to be better long term, which we've already talked about, but mm -hmm. just to re Force it. Now, here is what drives us to create projects in Six Sigma, drives us to change changes in the uh, processes. First, one of the most important things is voice of the customer. So the voice of the customer is going to tell us what they want. It might be through surveys, it might be through complaints, it might be from going out and meeting with the customer. Um, it can be many, many things. Customer calls us and they tell us what they think. Um, or maybe because they're buying the product from somebody else that makes a similar product to us. So voice of customer <coughs> is obviously the most important because they're putting revenue in our pockets. Voice of business, we've discussed already. Voice of business is basically what's good for our company. What is it that we should be doing to make our company more successful? What is the strategy that our company is utilizing? VOE is a voice of the employee. Now, a little bit trickier to get because a voice of the employee, many employees do not really want to speak their mind because they know it can fall back on them. So we may have stuff where we have like th um, surveys where they can uh, uh, submit without their name being known. We may have suggestion boxes where they don't have to sign their name. Um, and sometimes we'll just impromptu walk up to a survey and ask their opinion on something. And sometimes they'll give us some really good input to where to go from there. So we always have to know what is and what should be. <clears throat> now, in the old days, a lot of times the upper management did not involve the people actually working on the floor. They basically just said, here, this is what you're here to do. This is your role. My role is to be the one to come up with better ideas. But now with Six Sigma, our job is to involve everyone that we can that's part of the process so we can see how to better the process. And even our vendors, because they might have seen other um, companies doing it a different way. They might have some ideas. I mean, our customers may have seen it a different way. They may have different ideas. Okay. So this will take us to our belts. What does each belt do? Now, when you first start off in Six Sigma, the first belt that most people go for is something called a yellow belt. Yellow belt obviously being the lowest. That's usually something achieved by one day worth of training. And it's um, to, to make people feel that they're part of the solution, that they know that they have achieved something. And by achieving something, they can you know, uh, make suggestions. They are part of it. Um, and a lot of times, yellow belt may be with somebody on the front line helping gather data that's going to be turned over to what's called a green belt. Now, a green belt in every company can be a little bit different. A green belt might use statistical software that they're going to turn over. They might be a group leader. They might be a manager of a department. Um, it just depends. Every company is unique. The black belt is a person who's going to help utilize and pick out what tools are going to be important for this project to be successful. How are we going to track things? What uh, measuring tools are we going to utilize? Um, keep the champion uh, knowledge of what's going on. Keep the stakeholders. Hold meetings. Um, green belts can also hold meetings. But to try to relay information. Now the master black belt, the easiest way I want you to think of a master black belt versus a black belt. If you were at a nice restaurant, you usually have a chef. And the chef will not do any of the, the cooking. The chef is actually going to uh, make sure that the quality is there. It's going to make sure that they have the right tools to cook the meals right. They'll, they'll create the recipes for the cooks. They'll ensure the quality stays the same. They, that if something's supposed to be cooked at a certain temperature, it is cooked at a certain temperature. So the chef is the one who kind of comes up with the plan, makes sure things work, where the cooks or the black belts are going to make sure that everything's implemented. Any questions? No, clear so far. Okay. Now, not all Six Sigma deployments are driven from the top executives. Now, the data is clear. However, those deployments are driven by executive management are more successful than aren't. Essentially, if you want to make a change in a company, if you can't get the executives to buy off on it, 
you're always going to have resistance. It doesn't matter. You know, if the bigger a company is, the more people, you're going to have resistance. And it's just human nature. I have a job. I can barely keep up with the job I'm doing now. That's part of op operational management. So most people have a role in operational management. Now you're saying, well, I need you to help me on the project and do your day-to-day -day job. So if you can't go to upper management and say, I need help to get these people to you know, take on this task as well as their current job, it can be very difficult. Okay? Um, okay. So, so one of the things we want to do is set meaningful goals and objectives for the corporations, set performance expectations for the corporation, and ensure continuous improvement in the process and eliminate barriers. Okay. Now here's our friend the champion, which we already mentioned. The champion identifies and selects the most meaningful projects to work on. They provide guidance to the Six Sigma belt and open the doors for the belt to apply improvements. It's very important that they're part of our team. They own project selection. Uh, obtain needed project resource, eliminate roadblocks. They're the people that if something takes a month to order, they're going to try to get it there for you in a couple of days. Participate in all project reviews. Now with the introduction of uh, Skype and video conferencing, they may not be physically in the meeting sitting there, but they're going to attend the meeting. <clears throat> they need to ask good questions. Hopefully they've been on many projects before. One to three to per four, uh, per hour week commitment. They need to know what's going on, but they're not going to be there as part of the daily operations. Yeah, there's a there's something else I'm hearing. Is there something else going on around you? No, it's. Um, did, did you did you move your? Okay, we've got a gap going on here. I'm not hearing you right at the moment. Okay. Um, okay, there you are. Yeah, you have some feedback going on. I don't know if this Did you move your microphone or speaker up? Uh, no, I'm trying to uh, turn the volume down a little bit so it doesn't interfere. The speaker's built into the monitor. The, the microphone is built into the monitor. That sounds a lot better. Okay. Not sure. Okay. Let's see. I'll turn my mic. Okay. End this broadcast. Another one. Another one. Give me one second. I'll send you the new link. Okay.